Hi, hello, how are you? Uh, shall we study Bible together? Uh, now, uh, we're, we're just about uh, learning about the Jesus ministry and this is his fourth year that uh, went into. So probably somewhere around probably January, I would say, in uh, fourth year. And uh, April, uh, he will be crucified. So this is about three to four months before uh, he was crucified. And uh, this is on the way that uh, he's moving from uh, Galilee to Jerusalem. And uh, uh, the book uh, of the Bible we're going to learn today from the Luke chapter 10, uh, verse starting from verse 25. So if you have a Bible, please open your Bible to Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Uh, shall we read? Now, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you understand it? Um, now, what happened is, uh, as Jesus traveling from the Galilee and on, on the way to Jerusalem, uh, he sent uh, the 70 uh, disciples, the 70 peoples, and they came back and uh, they, they are so joyous and very happy. And uh, at, at that time, uh, this uh, religious, uh, religious uh, uh, law, uh, this man, who are expert in uh, uh, law, which means he's expert in the Old Testament, in the Bible. Uh, he decided to test Jesus. Now, uh, he probably thought that whether Jesus is Messiah or is it how much Jesus know about the Bible or that Jesus really answered correctly. So this man probably already had answer himself, but then he wanted to ask Jesus and see, to test Jesus and see if he are going to answer correctly. So this man asked a question and said that, Hey, uh, Jesus, what should we do to uh, uh, inherit the eternal life? Now, uh, for this man's uh, mind was, in order to receive the eternal life, you have to do something, you have to do some actions. And that's what apparently he thought. So he asked that question. And uh, interesting is uh, Jesus, uh, how he replied to this. He actually uh, answer question by questions. <laughs> and uh, he, he, he's the one asking him back uh, and saying that, hey, what do you think uh, the Bible said? And um, this man uh, going to explain after this in verse 27. And let's read. The expert answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. Um, what interesting is uh, after Jesus asked this man, that, uh, what do you think the Bible said? And uh, probably with his proud mind, he said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, okay, to explain. And then he explained was that uh, basically love your God and uh, love your neighbor. And then Jesus uh, in turn told him that uh, you, you said right. <laughs> so do that exactly what you said. Uh, this is a very interesting conversation. Now, uh, the questions about eternal life, uh, this, is, this is not the uh, only time Jesus was asked. Uh, if you look at the Luke chapter uh, 18, verse 18, yeah, you will see that there was a young rich man asked Jesus uh, exactly the same questions. How, what, should we, what does he do to uh, inherit eternal life? And then Jesus answered at that time, in Luke chapter 18, he answered, uh, you know, honor your parents and uh, don't steal, don't kill. Uh, Jesus pointed out in the Moses Ten Commandments. Uh, then this rich man uh, said that I, I do all that, uh, all that, and then Jesus said to the rich man in Luke chapter 18, saying that uh, the one thing you are not doing it, that is, uh, go sell all your belongings, 
belongings and uh, gave that to the poor and then follow me. Uh, then this man couldn't do that and Jesus said that um, uh, it is much easier for the, uh, um, very difficult for the rich man to go through the, uh, the pinhole or uh, the a camel is much easier to go through the pinhole or something like that. So uh, basically the both case that Jesus pointed out about inheriting the eternal life, uh, Jesus said, uh, Jesus pointed out to the uh, law, uh, the, the law of Moses, uh, Old Testament. And as you read the Old Testament, uh, clearly you indicate that uh, if you keep the command of God, that God will bless them and they will live longer. Um, now, what is a law? Uh, you know, that is basically the uh, God teaching us what is right and what is wrong. Uh, you know, uh, for us humans, sometimes we cannot tell uh, we kind of are mixed up, uh, right and wrong, and sometimes we don't know what's right. And, but in the God gave us uh, in a written uh, law, and then the, what is right and what is wrong things to do. And the bottom line, all His law is basically uh, based on uh, the love. And the more we understand that law, you understand there's a love uh, behind. And then the uh, God uh, told in the Old Testament that uh, if you keep his law, his command, uh, you'll be blessed. And that's exactly what these uh, people are referring to. So that this, uh, this uh, 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 the expert on the uh, uh, religious law, uh, he answered that way, love your God and love your neighbor. And what's interesting is that Jesus said, do, do exactly what you say. You say, right? <laughs> now, after this, what happens in verse 29, let's read. But the expert, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of a robber, who stripped him, beat him up, and went off, leaving him half dead. Uh, here, this uh, religious expert, uh, the he wanted to prove that himself that he's right. Um, the situation is probably like this, that uh, this guy, is, he's very proud that he knows, he's, he thinks he knows everything about the Bible, and he's an expert in the Bible. So he wanted to test Jesus, whether Jesus is really genuine Messiah, or if Jesus really a teacher, or Jesus knew uh, Bible good as he, he has. And then this man probably already had an answer already, uh, himself, so uh, he asked Jesus, uh, you know, what should you should do, what we should do to inherit eternal life. Uh, Jesus asked him to answer that question, so he answered. He said that, hey, um, okay, I'm gonna explain to you. Uh, you love God and you love your neighbor, and you just keep that that commandment. And then uh, Jesus in turn said, oh yeah, you say right. Why don't you do it? So this guy. Paul, this is not the way he expected, I guess. So he wanted to prove he's, he's right. He wanted to justify himself. That he now asked another question and say, so, okay, <clears throat> so, so by the way, Jesus, uh, what do you think about whose neighbor? Now, uh, he already had an answer, I think. This man already has an answer. And probably for uh, this uh, expert, his answer was that the neighbor is another Jew. Uh, you know that it's a neighbor so he probably thought that uh, my neighbor is the people who are surrounding me and they're Jew but you know maybe not the Samaritan or other enemies that they consider they are, they are not the person that we should love but uh, we should love our brothers and sisters and that's probably what he wanted to tell Jesus or what he ex expect, expect Jesus answer but then instead uh, Jesus tried to teach this man uh, by giving him parable, a parable of Good Samaritan. And so Jesus gave the parable and he used uh, this parable to explain to him who is really uh, his neighbor. And what Jesus used was that uh, there was a town uh, from the Jerusalem to Jericho and someone was traveling and this one was, uh, 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 you know, uh, then the thief came and the robber came and he, he got in trouble. He, he, he was uh, robbed. And uh, that's a situation he used. Then uh, uh, Jesus continued to explain about his uh, parable uh, in verse 31. Now, by chance, 
a priest was going down the road. But when he saw the injured man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came up to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Now, this parable that Jesus used is uh, this is a man, uh, you know, was injured uh, between uh, Jericho and Jerusalem. More likely, he because of the location, he, this man is a J Jewish, I be we believe. But either way, uh, here is a priest. Now, the priest uh, is the one serving God at the temple all the time, and the priest is the one have to tell people to keep the command. They, 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 they have, they're the one who have to teach others uh, the, the commandment. And this priest uh, ignored this man. Um, you know, if we talk about priests, uh, it's in our, our uh, modern, modern age, uh, this is the equivalent of uh, maybe um, uh, ministers, uh, pastors and fathers, or some people who are uh, really minist uh, paid by church, I would say, organization. They're, they're like a minister or a missionary, whoever. Uh, but then he, another group said uh, Levite. Now Levites, um, as you know, uh, in the Jewish community, there's the twelve tribes, and within the twelve tribes, uh, the priests is only should come from the uh, the, the tribe of Levites. Uh, but it's not that everyone become priest, and people who could not, people who did not become a priest. Uh, uh, those Levites, they still help priests, uh, such as they clean up the temples or like uh, they, they do all other uh, uh, things at the temple. So for, for us, they are like, uh, uh, like a deacons or committees or leaders of the church. Uh, so either way, the, here's the priest and here is a Levite. Uh, they, are, they are leader of their religious uh, uh, religions and they're the one who have to teach other person uh, the how you know keep the uh, command, and especially love your neighbor is definitely uh, the biggest command. So, uh, but yet they ignore this man. Well, that's interesting. But then Jesus compared to these uh, religious leaders, he compared to uh, the Samaritan, and afterward in the verse thirty-three. Uh, let's read. But a Samaritan, who was traveling came to where the injured man was, and when he saw him, he felt compassion for him. He went up to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Now, here, uh, the priest and the Levite, they both ignore this man. But here's uh, the Samaritan came. Now Samaritan, um, as you probably know, the uh, Jew and Samaritan they hate each other. They are like an enemy. Um, they, 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 don't like. They don't even talk to each other. Um, but then here comes the Samaritan walking that road, and he felt sorry for that man. Uh, and probably couldn't tell this man is a Jew or Samaritan or whoever. And probably that's not the important point, I guess. The important point is this man is a Samaritan. Uh, more likely this guy's uh, injured is a Jew, but uh, he f felt compassion, whoever he is. And um, this man, um, you know, wiped this guy's wound with oil and put him in the, uh, maybe a donkey or something, uh, and took him to the uh, hotel that he going to stay that night anyway. So he took care of this man, and um, uh, basically that's that. The point is, I think Jesus wanted to bring is a neighbor, is someone who felt compassion on that man. Uh, let's read after this what happens. His parable continued to say in the verse twenty, uh, verse thirty-five. Then next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, "Take care of him, and whatever else you spend, uh, whatever, uh, whatever else you spend, I will repay you when I come back this way." Which of these three do you think became a neighbor to that man who fell into the hands of that robber? The expert in religious law said, the one who showed mercy to him. So Jesus said to him, go and do the same. 
Um, the parable indicates that uh, this Samaritan uh, took this injured man to the, his own uh, hotel, I mean inn, and then the time he going to check out next day, he gave uh, two silver coins. Now, the one silver coin is uh, uh, more likely it's a one-day uh, 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 wage. So the two silver coins, probably like a two days uh, wage, uh, uh, which means probably in our modern understanding, somewhere like a $200, I would say, two to $300. So this uh, Samaritans gave uh, to the hotel people. I will give you like a two hundred dollars, and uh, uh, you know, please take care of this man. I I I go to check out, but then I will come back here again on the way, and if uh, it's not enough, I will pay more. And so this guy went, and um, um, now the question Jesus asked to this uh, uh, expert uh, is, uh, who is the real neighbor? Uh, obvious answer was the uh, the person who uh, showed the compassion. Uh, him. Now, uh, there's a little interesting uh, video that I remember when I was in a seminary in the U.S. Um, there was a videotape was showing. Now, uh, this videotape was filmed in not, not the seminary I went, but some other seminary campus. And, uh, but either way, so uh, they, somebody put a hidden camera on the seminary uh, campus. And uh, you know, in 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 the, in the middle of a, a, a area, the open field in the campus, uh, there was uh, students and or teachers. They are walking uh, on the seminary, uh, and then there's a bench uh, at the uh, 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 like a park area on the seminary. And uh, uh, the guy, uh, the another seminary students, he pretend to get uh, his stomach hurts, all of a sudden his stomach getting hurt. So the questions are, either uh, people will stop uh, for him, uh, just like uh, this Samaritan story. So there's a hidden camera actually filming, and here comes the professor of the uh, seminary, and the professor look, look this man who showing that his stomach seems hurting, but it looks like uh, maybe he's okay, maybe then he, he, this professor just uh, walk, walk away. <laughs> And then, here comes the uh, seminary student. Do you remember the seminary is a place these people will be a minister later on, okay? But here comes another seminary students, and they basically did the same. They, they looked down and they, they, they saw this man uh, uh, pretend to be hurting in his stomach, but then the, they saw, he, kind of look, he may be okay, you know, kind of look, and then he, they just uh, walk away. And eventually, uh, there was a lady. Uh, the middle-aged lady uh, came and uh, she stopped and she tried to uh, comfort, uh, she tried to you know, help this uh, uh, man. And uh, she was just a, a person uh, who just wanted to study Bible at the seminary. But anyway, later, uh, the, uh, they interviewed the professor and also the seminary students who uh, you know, passed by. Uh, and then both, do you know what they said? Uh, why, why they didn't help this man, do you know? Their answer was, uh, they didn't have time. You know, our, our modern age, uh, like you drive in the highway or like uh, you walk in the street, uh, if there's a person in trouble, more likely, uh, quite often we ignore because uh, it's very busy that our culture is. Everyone's so busy. Uh, that we don't have time to help other people. Uh, for this uh, Samaritan, uh, for his damage, it's probably he spent another extra maybe hour, maybe two, he stopped by and cleaned up this man's wound with oil and then put him into his own uh, vehicle uh, and then took him to the hotel where he's supposed to stay anyway. So uh, he probably wasted about maybe hour or so maybe and then, then at the next day, he spent about $200 uh, for this man. So the total damage or total cost for showing the act of love is maybe our, maybe to the max, and then maybe a $200, maybe $300 the max. Uh, that is about that this Samaritan did to this uh, man uh, on the way he's going to work. Um, but in the modern age, we don't have that much uh, even even hours or so the time we don't have or the money 
I, I pretty much as a, most of us uh, had a two three hundred dollar extra money uh, because quite often if you go to the expensive restaurant you spend very similar to that amount anyway but then uh, we have a money to fill up our stomach but we don't have money to help others and uh, so that's that is a sad but then the, 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 you know I think I think Bible is clearly indicate that what is that who's a neighbor is a neighbor that we should show the compassion and let's read uh, another part of the Bible uh, 1st John chapter 3 verse 17 to 20 1st John chapter 3 verse 17 and 20 let me read this but whoever has the world's possessions and sees his fellow Christians in need and shuts off his compassion against him how can the love of God reside in such a person? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. And by this we will know that we are of the truth and we convince our conscience in His presence. That if our conscience condemns us, that God is greater than our conscience, and knows all things. Uh, it is very clear the Bible telling us that uh, you know our neighbor, the whom we should love, is whoever in need, and uh, we should show the compassion. That is uh, love. Um, now I know some of you probably think it's easy to say, but it's difficult to do. Uh, today's basically message is uh, you know. No matter what you're thinking, you understand your head, but we have to do action. And the love, uh, you know, we have to, we have, to have an action as, uh, with love, you know, uh, you know, loving action. That's what we have to have. But then, uh, but some people, some people, however, it's very difficult to love that person, don't you think? I mean, some people, such as a person who attacks you. I don't know, you want to call that person as an enemy, maybe a person who attacks someone, you know, be very bad to you. Uh, someone damages you, uh, give them some damage. Um, it's very difficult to love your enemy. Uh, but then the, what the Bible said about that in Matthew chapter 5, Verse 43 to 46. Uh, this is a part of a uh, uh, sermon on the mount. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 and 46. Uh, let me read. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I said to you, Love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you, prosecute you, so that you may be like your father in heaven. Since he causes the suns to rise on the ev uh, evil and the good and send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what rewards do you have? Even the tax collectors do the same, don't they? Um, I know, <laughs> you know, people who attack us, people who hate us people who be mean to us, quite often uh, they were uh, uh, being mean to, they, 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 they were bored by somebody when they're young. They, 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 are, they have a fear of being attacked, they have a fear of somebody accusing of them. So uh, in turn, they decided to attack others before people attack them. And um, some people even make loud noise if we say, hey, why did you do that? And that person, instead of responding calmly, the person sometimes get very uh, violent with a very loud voice. Nah, 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 nah. Mm. So that reaction itself is that person don't want to be hurt um, because that person may have the uh, experience in the past, like when their childhood, uh, the person was always being accused of doing wrong, or, uh, there's no love. They, and then uh, some people, uh, if we, uh, some people go reverse. If we ask the per if we uh, consult the person and say, why did you do that? And the person 
uh, become very quiet and uh, they shut off their door and uh, they don't want to see any other person. Some people really secluded themselves from the society because they are afraid of being uh, uh, attacked or uh, injured. Um, some people cannot even move. Some people are very afraid of the, uh, standing in front of people. Uh, because they are basically afraid that some people give a very mean remark later on, or you, you did bad, or, or you sing wrong, or uh, some people cannot move, some people, you know, very, very intense, you know, some people like that. Uh, why we do this? Uh, the bottom line is all of us, all of us want to be loved, but there is no love in this society. We live is, uh, we live in a uh, darkness we live in a society without really kindness and love in many cases and then all of us injured so bad and so if somebody touched the injured we react to it so that seems the case so people who are attacking you and your enemy i know it's very difficult to love them uh, but the bible said love your enemy now another kind of people that are very difficult to love is someone who are look abnormal or somebody act abnormal. Um, I, I, um, um, I'm, I'm riding at the, in a train in Japan and sometimes I see a person maybe handicapped, like a mental handicapped person maybe and usually they clo they, they, their attire is not really clean. Uh, they look kind of uh, ragged and um, uh, but in some cases uh, they're, they're screaming in a train station uh, or mumbling or they, they say some word that doesn't make any sense and when those people come into the train and sit in the chair uh, usually the people don't want to sit next to the person they we, we most of people just uh, leave the person alone and try to sit in a far from the person um, you know but but the bible clearly said that uh, we we love we should love basically everybody the, we should love we should feel sorry and compassion we have to have um, it's not easy but then that's that's what the Bible clearly indicate we should love our enemy we should love whoever the person is and uh, we shouldn't have a prejudice uh, now however uh, the Bible clearly says we should love, but it's not me. We should let them be, let them do anything they want. I think it's uh, love with a discipline is required. Um, I give you some example uh, that when I was in the church, uh, uh, there was uh, one day uh, a lady, uh, just almost end of the uh, service, and uh, uh, a lady came into our church, uh, the lady who never came before. And she told us that she's hungry and she don't have a food to eat, so she asked us to give her money. And um, we told her, okay, if you're hungry, uh, there's a shelter, uh, the food ministry uh, locations, we, we tell her about that place. And, uh, but then uh, she got very upset. And the time that she left the church with a loud voice said, You Christian, you're supposed to love others. And you, you, guys are, you guys don't have any love in this church. Blah, blah. And she, she left. Uh, what do you think? I, I, um, you know, let, let me read in a one verse in the, from the Bible. Uh, this, this, this is from the uh, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. All those I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be honest and repent. Uh, this is a word God did into a church uh, in uh, Revelation. But clearly the God, uh, our perfect God, He does discipline us because He loves us. And um, the love is not that we should let that person do anything they want. Uh, or just keep giving the money, but then I think the love is simply that we have to consider the best for the person, and uh, sometimes the best is that sometimes we have to tell the person uh, that you know that like I wish we, we sometimes we have to discipline the person or we have to tell them that uh, what is right, what is wrong. Uh, but either way, um, love takes patience, and uh, things not gonna get better right away. But the Bible very clearly indicates that love is patient. 
and uh, also we have to have a face that we let the God handle uh, everything and as we show love and act of love sometimes it's painful and there's some damage and uh, there's some cost and together uh, we see uh, lots of patience required but we, sub we have to have faith that God will take care of the issue eventually. Uh, now today the, uh, we learn the, uh, from the, this Good Samaritan's uh, parable that uh, we should love God and we should love neighbors. Bible clearly indicate about God's love in the first John chapter 5 3. Let me read that part. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandment, and his commandment do not weigh us on down. Uh, Bible said uh, God's love uh, is uh, to, to, to love God we should keep his commandment. And then the same first John Chapter 3, verse 23 says, so what is the commandment? Uh, the first John, chapter 3, tw verse 23. Now, this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he gave us the commandment. So bottom line is, Bible revealed to us, to love God, or God's love, is us to love our neighbor. <laughs> the Bible also said, uh, if you cannot love your neighbor who, whom you can see, how can you love God, the invisible? I mean, invi how you can love God you cannot see? Uh, that makes sense. I mean, love God and love neighbor, basically same, same, same things. Um, so the Bible clearly indicates that uh, first we, 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 should, we, we should love God, and that's His commandment, love God. And we love our neighbor, even though the person it's very hard to love, even the person is your enemy, we we love that person. And also, the love requires the actions. Uh, only wording is not the love. We 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 have to do some action. Um, now, uh, yet 2019 just started, and hopefully. Uh, that we will be uh, more into the uh, personal love and uh, God will help us with the power of the Holy Spirit that we can be uh, more uh, lovable <laughs> in the personal, in, uh, personal of love. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what we should aim for and that's I think we learned today. Uh, shall we pray? Lord, thank you for today's message and uh, from the parable of the Good Samaritans we learned that love requires action and also to love God and love uh, our neighbor, even though the neighbor can be our enemy. Lord, please uh, strengthen us and be with us so that we can go through this difficult time and we can glorify you by showing love towards the others. Lord, thank you for this opportunity and learn your words. Just in your prayer. Amen. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.